Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 12. Sue Wiley, pioneering voice in Kentucky Broadcasting. Sue Wiley, a venerable figure in Kentucky Broadcasting, tragically passed away after a car crash on October 24th night in Lexington. The accident, which involved five cars, took place around 5 p.m. at Alumni Drive and Chino Road. While three individuals were hospitalized with minor injuries, Wiley unfortunately succumbed at UK Medical Center. Recognized as Kentucky's first female news anchor, Wiley's impact on the field was profound. Over her three-decade-long career with Lexington's NBC affiliate from 1968 to 1998, she was acknowledged for her rigorous journalistic approach, especially on her political show, Your Government. Names like Jesse Jackson and Ronald Reagan were among her notable guests. As Kaki Urch, associate professor at UK's School of Journalism and Media puts it, Wiley was not just the first, but remained the best, continually elevating her craft. Another influential figure, WKYT's Barbara Bailey, saw Wiley as a respected competitor who didn't just break barriers for women in broadcasting, but obliterated them. Always impeccably presented, Wiley's charisma extended beyond the screen. Bailey recalls the aura Wiley had, drawing admiration and respect even during casual meetings at local stores. Beyond television, Wiley graced the airwaves as the host of her own show on WVLK Radio until her retirement in 2013. Her contributions were celebrated with her induction into the Kentucky Journalism Hall of Fame in 1999 and the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Silver Circle in 2017. Tribute to Sue Wiley. Number 11. Cedric Jones, a beacon of inspiration on and off the screen. Cedric Beastie Jones, the multifaceted talent known for his prowess in boxing and acting, passed away suddenly at the age of 46 on October 16th. An announcement from his company, Beastie Boxing, paid homage to him as a loving father, devoted husband, caring son, brother, community leader, and an incredible friend. Not only did Jones shine on the big screen with roles in films like The Terminal List, The Magnificent Seven, Southpaw, Princess of the Row, Marshall County, and most recently, Emancipation, alongside Will Smith, but he also touched countless lives through his gym and the Be A Moved Foundation. As the founder of both establishments, he inspired and assisted many to surpass boundaries they once deemed insurmountable. The renowned director of Emancipation, Antoine Fuqua, encapsulated the depth of Jones's impact in his tribute, referring to him as the light that brightened every room and set. As friends, family, and admirers gathered for a memorial service and run on October 22nd, his legacy as a beacon of hope, strength, and determination was celebrated. Jones's wife Barbie Jones encapsulated the sentiment perfectly, urging everyone to run and celebrate my husband's legacy. He leaves behind a lasting legacy, fond memories, and his loving family. Wife Barbie Jones and their three children, Brooklyn, Braxton, and Briston. Tribute to Cedric Jones. Number 10. Juliana Rocha a shining star in the world of beauty influencing. Juliana Rocha, the beloved beauty influencer known for her captivating makeup tutorials and beauty tips, passed away at the tender age of 25. Her family, who made the somber announcement on October 24th, has left her vast community of fans in shock and sadness, especially after her unexpected disappearance from social media two months prior. Hailing from Brazil, 
Juliana carved a niche for herself in the digital space. With each post, whether it was about fashion, nails, or hair care, she radiated passion and creativity. Her sudden halt in posting on August 25th led to much speculation among her followers. While the reason behind her demise remains veiled in mystery, a family friend hinted at cancer, though the family hasn't confirmed this. Industry partners and collaborators mourn her loss deeply. Pink 21 Cosmeticos, one of her collaborators, remembered her as an incredible partner, extremely dedicated and talented. Similarly, her management team at Hello Folks remarked that her influence and presence would forever be remembered. Tributes from heartbroken fans have been pouring in. One said, I can't believe Juliana Rocha died. I loved watching her videos. While another fan poignantly remarked, her unexpected departure reminds us that life is fragile and we must value every moment. Her legacy and creativity will live on in the world of makeup. Tribute to Juliana Rocha. Number 9. Richard Roundtree, the trailblazing action hero of the silver screen. Richard Roundtree, celebrated as the first black action hero for his iconic portrayal of Detective John Shaft, passed away from pancreatic cancer on October 24 at his Los Angeles residence, aged 81. Born on July 9, 1942, in New Rochelle, New York, Roundtree's journey from playing for New Rochelle High School's esteemed football team to attending Southern Illinois University, eventually led him to the entertainment world. Beginning his career in the Ebony Fashion Fair, Roundtree transitioned to the stage with the Negro Ensemble Company, stepping into the shoes of legendary boxer Jack Johnson. But it was his role in Shaft in 1971 and its subsequent sequels that firmly entrenched his legacy in film history. He went on to work alongside industry giants such as Laurence Olivier, Ben Gazzara, Clint Eastwood, and Burt Reynolds. While Roundtree's cinematic achievements were vast, his television accolades were equally commendable. Notable roles included Sam Bennett in the groundbreaking Roots and several stints in shows like Beverly Hills 90210, Desperate Housewives, The Closer, and Heroes. His return to the Shaft universe in 2019 connected generations as he worked alongside Samuel L. Jackson and Jesse Usher. Beyond the screen, Richard faced personal challenges with remarkable resilience. Having been diagnosed with breast cancer in 1993, he valiantly underwent treatment, shedding light on the disease's rare occurrence in men. Remembered as a trailblazer in cinema and a beacon of hope in life, Richard Roundtree's legacy of breaking barriers and defying stereotypes will endure for generations to come Tribute to Richard Roundtree. Number 8. Rock Brenner, A Dynamic Life Beyond the Silver Screen Shadow. Rock Brenner, a multifaceted personality who masterfully wove careers as a writer, historian, roadie for the band, and much more, all the while being the son of legendary actor Ewell Brenner, left us at the age of 76 on October 13th in Salisbury due to complications from multiple myeloma. Born to the star of The King and I, Rock had the privilege of mingling with Hollywood and music elites, with figures like Liza Minnelli and Elizabeth Taylor featuring in his early life. Yet he never rested on these laurels. Academically gifted, Brenner attended prestigious institutions such as Yale and Columbia, earning a doctorate in American history. He showcased his passion for the arts, performing a one-man play on Broadway and penning novels like The Ballad of Habit and Accident. Rock's affinity to celebrities saw him serve as a bodyguard and press liaison for Muhammad Ali and later manage the Hard Rock Cafe becoming a pivotal link between Robbie Robertson and Martin Scorsese, leading to the creation of the documentary 
the last waltz. An entrepreneur, he invested in ventures like the Hard Rock Cafe and even opened an air charter service. However, his profound journey was rooted in intellectual pursuits. Authoring a candid biography about his father, delving into his family's history in Russia, and co-writing on New York's water policy with Andrew Cuomo, Brenner was more than just the shadow of an iconic figure. His life story, rich in experiences, challenges, and accomplishments, is a testament to the relentless spirit of carving one's path irrespective of where one starts. Tribute to Rock Brenner. Number 7. Ida Applebrook, A Bold Exploration of Gender, Identity, and Social Dynamics Ida Applebrook, the groundbreaking American multimedia artist, left this world on October 22nd, age 93. Born in the Bronx on November 11, 1929, Applebrook's vibrant journey through the art world was marked by her fearless exploration of gender, sexual identity, violence, and politics. A recipient of the esteemed MacArthur Fellowship Genius Grant, and the College Art Association Distinguished Art Award for Lifetime Achievement, her art consistently challenged societal norms. Born as Ida Applebaum, she navigated the challenges of an ultra-Orthodox Jewish upbringing and the male-dominated world of graphic design, emerging as a vocal critic of power dynamics. Applebrug's resilience shone through when she started creating sketches during a brief hospitalization for depression later exhibited in 2010 as intimate explorations of her own body. Her participation in the 1973 Feminist Artists Conference at the California Institute of the Arts marked a significant turning point, pushing her towards social activism in art. On relocating to New York City, she adopted the name Applebrook and crafted her signature style, combining comic strip imagery with advertising storyboards. Over her illustrious career, Applebrook produced self-published books, joined feminist publications, and showcased her work in leading galleries such as Hauser and Amp Worth. Her works, including the pivotal Mona Lisa exhibition, have been displayed globally, affirming her position in contemporary art. Beyond her individual achievements, Applebrook's legacy lies in the profound influence she wielded over younger artists, a testament to which was the 2020 major group show at the Perez Art Museum, Miami, where her work was featured alongside renowned artists like Louise Bourgeois and Cindy Sherman. Her story, art, and relentless spirit will remain an inspiration for many. Tribute to Ida Applebrook. Number 6. J. Frederick Motts, a towering judicial figure with a legacy of fairness and precision. Frederick Motts, a distinguished United States District Judge for the District of Maryland, passed away at his Baltimore home on October 23rd at the age of 80. Born on December 30, 1942 in Baltimore, Motts's illustrious legal career began after earning a Bachelor of Laws from the University of Virginia School of Law in 1967. With experience ranging from Assistant United States Attorney to United States Attorney, his competence and dedication saw him nominated by President Ronald Reagan to the United States District Court for the District of Maryland in 1985. He served as Chief Judge from 1994 to 2001. In 2006, he judiciously struck down Maryland's Walmart law for its conflict with the federal ERISA Act, thereby promoting a business-friendly environment in Maryland. Additionally, in 2011, he presided over the high-profile anti-competition lawsuit involving Novel and Microsoft, which resulted in a mistrial after a hung jury. His dedication to the law was paralleled only by his commitment to his family. Motz's wife, Diana Gribben Motz, continues to serve on the Fourth Circuit, a beacon of integrity, precision, and fairness, Judge Motz's impact on the judicial system will be remembered for generations. Tribute to Frederick Motz.
Number 5. Terry Dishinger, a luminary in college basketball and Olympic glory. Terry Dishinger, an esteemed figure in the annals of Purdue University basketball and a shining star on the 1960 U.S. Olympic gold medal winning team, passed away in Lake Oswego, Oregon, at the age of 82. The cause was complications from Alzheimer's disease. Born in Anderson, Indiana on November 21, 1940, Dischinger exhibited excellence on the basketball court from a young age. His stellar performances at Purdue included leading the Big Ten in scoring for three successive seasons. In recognition of his exceptional skills, he was chosen to represent the U.S. in the 1960 Olympics, becoming its youngest team member. Dischinger's NBA career was equally remarkable. He began with the Chicago Zephyrs, transitioning from college stardom to professional prowess by earning the Rookie of the Year title. Notably, despite his formidable NBA achievements, Terry's commitment to education saw him complete his bachelor's degree in chemical engineering, even during his rookie season. His journey in professional basketball had its challenges, with injuries impeding his potential in his later years. Yet the end of his NBA career marked the beginning of another accomplished phase in dentistry. With his dedication to education and self-improvement, Dischinger went on to earn a DDS degree and later a certificate in orthodontics, making significant contributions to the field. Survived by his wife, Mary, a son, a daughter, two sisters, and nine grandchildren, Terry Dischinger leaves behind a legacy of passion, discipline, and excellence both on and off the basketball court. Tribute to Terry Dischinger. Number 4. Ian Shugart, a pillar of public service and advocate for Canadian democracy. Ian Shugart, renowned for his distinguished tenure as the former clerk of the Privy Council and his significant contributions to Canadian governance, passed away at 66 on October 25th. Announced by Raymond Gain, the Speaker of the Senate, this loss deeply saddens the nation. Shugart's remarkable journey commenced as a policy advisor to the progressive conservative leaders Joe Clark and Brian Mulroney during the early 1980s. Ascending the echelons of governance, he became a senior advisor to Jake Epp, further showcasing his acumen in various ministerial roles. In 1991, he transitioned to public service, marking an era where he profoundly impacted Canadian policies. With roles from the executive director of the Medical Research Council to deputy minister across health, environment and foreign affairs, Shugart's influence was palpable across governments from Jean Chrétien to Justin Trudeau. Recognizing his unparalleled expertise, Trudeau appointed Shugart as the clerk of the Privy Council in 2019, entrusting him with leading Canada's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, a testament to his caliber. Esteemed colleagues like Senator Peter Beam lauded him for his mentorship and legacy, underscoring his Senate speech on the essence of restraint in political discourse. His recent appointment to the Senate in 2022 was marred by his health challenges, but his impassioned pleas for the health of Canadian democracy and calls for moderation have left an indelible mark. Senator Mark Gold aptly summarized, his wealth of experience will be missed. Tribute to Ian Shugart. Number 3. Natalie Zeman Davis, a beacon of early modern historical studies. Natalie Zeman Davis, a pioneering historian whose works breathed life into previously overlooked segments of early modern society, passed away on October 21st at the age of 94 after a battle with cancer. Born in Detroit, Michigan, Davis's illustrious career spanned decades, providing a wealth of insight into the lives of artisans, peasants, and women during the early modern period. Not just in France, her initial focus, but also across Europe, North America, and the Caribbean. Among her most renowned works, The Return of Martin Guerre delved deep into the intricate details of identity in a 16th-century French village. This book, like many others she authored, 
has been translated into numerous languages underscoring her global influence. As a testament to her profound impact on the field, Davis was the second woman to hold the presidency of the American Historical Association. Her accolades are numerous, including the Holberg International Memorial Prize, the National Humanities Medal, and being named Companion of the Order of Canada. Her personal life intertwined with her academic journey. In 1948, she married Chandler Davis, and they later relocated to Toronto amidst the Red Scare turmoil. Despite the adversities faced, Davis's unwavering commitment to scholarship, combined with her unique narrative style, made her a beacon in the world of historical studies. Beyond her written work, she championed cross-disciplinary approaches, combining history with anthropology, ethnography, and literary theory. Her legacy, marked by a fervent dedication to unearthing the tales of those previously shadowed in history, will continue to inspire generations of historians. Tribute to Natalie Zeman Davis. Number two, Charles Young, a pioneering visionary in higher education. Charles Chuck Young, an influential figure who indelibly shaped the University of California system, passed away on October 22nd at the age of 91. Born on December 30, 1931, in San Bernardino, California, Young's remarkable journey began with the Air National Guard and led him to serve in Japan during the Korean War. A member of UC Riverside's inaugural cohort, the Pioneer Class of the 1950s, Young's leadership talents emerged early as he became its first class president. This was just the beginning of his rise to becoming the UCLA Chancellor, a position he held for a transformative 29 years. Under Young's visionary leadership, UCLA metamorphosed from a regional entity to a globally recognized research institution. With an annual operating budget that grew from $170 million to nearly $2 billion, Young's impact was profound. Colleagues like John Sandbrook remember him as a proactive leader, someone who was deeply involved and always walked the floor. Beyond UCLA, Young's influence permeated other institutions, including the University of Florida, the Qatar Foundation, and even the Los Angeles Museum of Contemporary Art. In honor of his tireless service, UCLA named its research library after him and established the Charles E. Young Humanitarian Award. UCR, too, recognized his immense contributions by awarding him the UCR Medallion in 2018 for his extraordinary service, dedication, and leadership in the field of education. Young's impact wasn't just institutional. He had an emotional connection with his alma mater, often reminiscing about his early days at UCR. While his journey took him far and wide, he always cherished his roots, fondly reflecting on memories from nearly seven decades ago. Charles E. Young is survived by his wife, Judy, his son, Charles Young Jr., stepchildren, and a large extended family. His legacy of leadership, vision, and tireless dedication will remain etched in the annals of higher education. Tribute to Charles E. Young. Breaking news. News 1. Eric Jensen, best known for his role in the iconic series The Walking Dead, has recently been diagnosed with stage 4 colorectal cancer, prompting an urgent plea for financial support via a GoFundMe campaign. Jensen, 53, remains in high spirits, even continuing his professional work amidst chemotherapy. The diagnosis revealed cancer metastasizing to his liver. However, doctors are optimistic considering Jensen's strength and age, that with the right treatment, tumors could shrink, paving the way for surgeries. Jessica Blank, Jensen's wife, and the fundraiser's organizer, appeals to the community for assistance, citing their family's challenging financial condition, heightened by recent Hollywood strikes and Jensen's past medical history. Alarmingly, the Jensen family might also lose their health insurance. 
a vital lifeline they've held for over two decades through SAG and WGA affiliations. Describing Jensen as the backbone of a beloved young family, the fundraiser page emphasizes the possibility of survival, even with stage four cancer, especially if they receive the necessary financial support. In response to Jensen's health news, the Walking Dead community, including stars like Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Chief Content Officer Scott Gimple, rallied online, voicing their support and urging fans to help in any way possible. News 2. Sarah Michelle Gellar, known for her iconic role in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, recently commended her close friend Shannon Doherty for her unyielding spirit in her ongoing fight against cancer. Referring to Doherty as a warrior, Geller expressed admiration for her tenacity and strength, even in the face of adversity. Speaking to Access Hollywood, Geller, 46, remarked, She's a force to be reckoned with. Every day she confronts her battle with such courage, embodying what it truly means to be a warrior. Doherty, a familiar face from Beverly Hills 90210 and Charmed, initially received her breast cancer diagnosis in 2015. This past June, she disclosed the heart-wrenching news that the disease had advanced to her brain. Providing a personal glimpse into her journey, Doherty later uploaded a poignant video from her hospital bed before undergoing surgery to address a tumor in her brain. The accompanying caption candidly captured her fears, highlighting the profound impact cancer has not just on the diagnosed individual, but on their entire circle of loved ones. Geller's heartwarming support underscores the importance of community and friendships especially during life's most challenging moments. News 3. Mexico's Acapulco faced the devastating wrath of Hurricane Otis early on October 25th, with the Category 5 storm leaving behind a trail of destruction and panic. Hotels, a significant attraction of the beach resort, bore the brunt as torrential rains and raging winds gripped the southern Pacific coast. Eyewitness accounts on social media painted a grim picture. Broken windows, walls torn apart, vehicles submerged, and debris scattered everywhere. With phone lines severely impacted, comprehensive assessments of the damage remain a challenge. One particularly poignant account came from hotel guest Luisa Peña, who relayed her terrifying experience via TikTok. Taking shelter in a closet, she recounted her prayers and the sheer panic that consumed her as the hurricane tore through her room. Despite its terrifying intensity, initial reports are encouraging, with no immediate fatalities. However, President Andres Manuel López Obrador noted communication challenges in obtaining comprehensive updates. As Otis weakened and traveled inland, significant concerns remain. Mexico's Canagua warns of persistent heavy rains, while power outages, flight suspensions, and class cancellations have already affected residents and visitors alike. As authorities scramble to assess and address the aftermath, the resilient spirit of Acapulco's locals and the strength of its communities will undoubtedly shine through in the face of adversity. Number 1. Murray Elder, a pillar of British politics and champion of Scotland. Murray Elder, a devoted member of the British Labour Party and the House of Lords, passed away on October at the venerable age of 73. Born and raised in Scotland, Elder's education journey took him from Kirkcaldy High School to the University of Edinburgh where he earned a Master of Arts in Economic History. Notably, during these formative years, he cultivated a cherished friendship with Gordon Brown. His illustrious career commenced at the Bank of England from 1972 to 1980. Elder's commitment to Scottish affairs became apparent when he joined the Scottish Labour Party, eventually ascending to its General Secretary by 1988. His influence extended to the Scottish Constitutional Convention's executive from 1989 to 1992. The corridors of power in Westminster beckoned, and Elder adeptly served as the Chief of Staff to MP John Smith until 1994. Subsequently, he provided invaluable insights as a special advisor to Donald Duar, the Secretary of State for Scotland. In recognition of his enduring contributions on the 19th of July, 1999, Elder was bestowed the honor of a life peerage as Baron Elder of Kirkcaldy in Fife. His association with the Al Maktoum Institute in Dundee further showcased his passion for education and Scottish affairs. Beyond politics, Lord Elder showcased a love for Scotland's natural beauty. He was only the third Westminster parliamentarian to conquer all the Munros, Scotland's 3,000 feet hills. 
Murray Elder's life is a testament to his dedication to public service, his love for Scotland, and his commitment to higher ideals. Tribute to Lord Murray Elder.